Hi, I'm Herb Raymond Schneider. Today we're going to talk about a problem that is all too common, and that is erectile dysfunction. Now here is a, a situation where we look at the erectile tissue of the penis, and as we know, we don't walk around with erections all the time, or at least most people don't. And the reason is the blood flow in the penis. Now this is brought about by a switching mechanism. And that switching mechanism is really based on nerves, muscles, and chemistry. The chemistry is what happens at the nerve endings. And we can not only understand, but we can learn to control that chemistry. Now here is a situation where the uh, various muscle groups within the erectile tissue are in a state where the blood can flow in and flow out and not be uh, contained within the erection body. But under situations of sexual excitement, these muscles relax, and much like the sails of a ship catch the wind, in this case, the blood as it courses through the erectile tissue is held up. And what happens is that a low pressure system, which is the blood flowing through easily, turns into a high pressure system, and we recognize that as an erection. Now after time passes, the blood will flow away because the muscles relax. And it's those muscles relaxing that allows this to occur that we want to understand better. The key here is to control the five faucet phosphodiesterase, and that's what the medications that you've heard so much about recently do, such as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. Now, how common are patients having problems with erectile dysfunction? Very common. The population of this country is roughly 225 million people. <clears throat> Let's assume half of them are men. About a quarter of that population has this problem. That's why we hear so much about it. That's why industry is so interested in it. Now, there's lots of different causes, but most of them manifest themselves through this chemical reaction. Well, what sets it up for that to occur? Uh, health problems, diabetes, heart disease, surgery, uh, prostate cancer or, or colon cancer that is treated surgically, various medications like uh, sedatives, blood pressure medications, uh, pain medications, spinal cord injury, and maybe even hormone imbalance that relates to uh, either medication that's being taken or some disease process. Now we know that that is not a real profound problem if we're early in our diagnosis, and the medications, Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra, can influence that chemical reaction in a way that produces a very good solution for most people. But there's folks that have much more significant problems. Well, before we go there, what else can we do? There are devices, they're called vacuum devices. I think they really started in gentlemen's stores. What they what they're based on is the penis being entrapped in a tubular structure that generates a vacuum. The blood rushes in and a ring fits around the bottom of the penis and keeps the blood in place. This is a satisfactory solution for some people, but certainly not for all. And as I look at it as a physician who takes care of folks, I see this as somewhat inefficient. On the other hand, those folks who have a serious problem <clears throat> The pills can't get enough medication to the area where we need it. Why? Because when you take a pill, it goes through your intestinal tract, circulates through your entire system, it goes to your heart, your lungs, your brain, and these medications will have some reactivity in those areas if they're in very high dosage. But on the other hand, you can take medication that's similar, put it in a syringe with a very fine needle injected directly into the anatomical structure of the erectile body and the penis, and when you do this, you can overload that reaction and you can produce a quite good erection in somebody, for instance, who's had 
uh, let's say, a major cancer operation where a lot of the nervous tissue has been destroyed, you can still get this reaction in the erectile tissue of the penis, and that's known as injection therapy. When Viagra came along, it's kind of an interesting story. It really started out as a heart medication for people who had chest pain. But when Pfizer, the company that developed this, put this out for trial, what they found was, yes, it worked for chest pain, but when they went to collect their uh, samples of the medication that were on the trial, they couldn't get their medication back. Why? Well, the patients had found out this medication did something that really wasn't all related to chest pain. What it did was it inhibited 5-phosphodiesterase, and those folks who had erection problems, although they thought they were treating their heart when they started, were really treating the erection problem. And the company then realized that they were really onto something. But what happens when this doesn't work? Well, there are surgical options. And in today's uh, marketplace and health, minimally invasive is a very important word. It means that we don't disturb the body much. Well, penile implantation is quite doable through minimally invasive techniques. And what's more, it's been done for a very long time. Uh, it's been present since the very late 1970s. And today, there's probably more than 300,000 implants in place. And the part that you really need to know is most of those patients have very good success with this as a treatment option. And it's an inflatable device. It has a reservoir and a pump and cylinders. The cylinders are placed in the erectile bodies, and the patient, through manipulation of pump, of the pump, can control the erection uh, and make the penis soft at his choice. There have been over 300,000 devices implanted. This has been going on since the early 1980s, and most of the patients feel quite satisfied with the way this product works for their particular problem. The cylinders are made of silastic. The fluid is saline, so when it's pumped through the system, if there is a break in the tubing, uh, it's just saline, which is compatible with body fluids, and there really is minimal risk. The good part about this is over 90% of the people who have this system and need this added advantage would recommend it to others. But the part that's probably most impressive is their partners recommend it to others as well. Minimally invasive treatments are very important in today's medical world, and ambulatory surgery centers are places where we can implant these kinds of devices where you come in, and the difference is there's no hospital attached. You go to a recovery area, within a few hours you're home, and within a few days you're back doing the activities that you have done and considered to be your average day. So it's a brief summary of what we can do for folks with erectile dysfunction. If this is a problem you have, you don't need to be bashful, others aren't, and the solutions are very good. We at Riverside Urology are here and most interested in working with you and be glad to help you if you just uh, give us a call. Thanks.